Today in this video lecture, we are going to solve our Khan University Examination Board Class 9 Annual Examination 2021 Physics Paper 1 that comprises of total 50 MCQs uh, in which we have 40 MCQs from the theory part and 10 questions from our alternate to practicals. So let's come to our question number one. So here we have our first question. If 1.76 centimeter cube is the volume of one cube and the volume of 21 such cubes round off to three significant figures will be so the volume of one cube is 1.76 centimeter cube and we have to find the volume of 21 such type of cubes so this is simple we have to multiply the volume by 21 so 21 multiplied by 1.76 so let us calculate this 1.76 times 21 that is equal to 36.96 centimeter cube and uh, in this expression we have four significant figures but we need our answer to be in three significant figures so the six will be round off to uh, and uh, according to the rules it will be uh, uh, round off by adding one to the preceding number so by rounding off this we will get 37.0 centimeter cube and in this expression we have three significant figures so the correct answer for this question number one will be option d the number 123.4 can also be written in the scientific notation so let's convert this ordinary notation into the scientific form this decimal will be shifted uh, between 1 and 2 so 1 2 3.4 will become 1.234 and we have shifted uh, two digits towards the left hand side which means we will add plus two in the power of 10. so the correct scientific notation will be 1.234 10 raised to the power 2 so option c is the right answer then we have question number three the prefix used for the multiple of 10 raised to the power minus 9 so this is as simple as uh, the uh, value 10 raised to the power 9 and we know that it is equal to nano so the correct answer for this question number 3 will be option c nano let's come to the question number 4 all of the following are the scalar quantities the scalar quantities are those that do not require any direction they can be completely described with the help of uh, uh, its magnitude and its si unit so time is a scalar quantity the mass is the scalar quantity the distance is the scalar quantity while the velocity is a quantity that is rate of change of displacement and this is a quantity that require direction as well so the correct answer for this question number four is option d now let's see our next question a child drops a tennis ball from the height of 10 meters so we have got the height that is 10 meter and a child drops this means that initial velocity of the ball is zero meters per second and in this case the gravitational acceleration will be positive 
10 meters per second square. The velocity of the ball just before it <laughs> uh, strikes the ground will be that will be our uh, VF. We have to find out and uh, in this particular case the gravity is given that is 9.8. So let us use this G in our equation rather than the round off value that is 10. So to find out the final velocity we have the third equation of uh, free fall motion that is 2gh equals to vf square minus vi square let's substitute the values to multiply by 9.8 multiply by height 10 equals to vf square minus 0 square so let's further simplify this zero square will be zero so finally we will get two multiply by 10 multiply by 9.8 so 2 into 10 is 20 and 20 multiply by 9.8 is 196 will be equals to vf square while taking square root on both side we will get vf is equal to 14 meter per second so the correct answer for this question number five will be option a let's see the same uh, type of question in six a stone placed at a certain height takes five seconds to reach the ground so this is t and when it is dropped the distance covered by the stone will be so we don't know the height we just know that it is dropped so this means vi will be equal to zero meter per second and the value of gravitational acceleration will be taken as positive 9.8 and the time is 5. so we have to find the distance covered that is means that we have to find the height so for that we know that height is equal to v i t plus g t square over 2 initial velocity is 0 multiply by time 5 plus g is 9.8 multiply by time square divided by 2 so this expression will become 0 so let's calculate the second expression to find the height so after calculating 9.8 times 5 is square divided by 2 our result is 122.5 meters so the correct answer for this question number 6 is option c now let's see question number 7 the moving blades of the electric fan we have to identify the type of motion in an electric fan and particularly we have to identify the motion of the blades or the wings of the fan so the correct answer for the question number seven is option b that uh, the uh, moving blades of uh, electric fan are in rotatory motion the motion of the fan is rotatory so option b is the right answer now let's see question number eight the given table shows the distance covered by a car in four different segments in first segment the car has covered 10 meters in segment two the car has covered uh 11 to 22 meters so in the first case the distance covered is 10 meter similarly in segment 2 if from 11 to 22 meters that is that uh, this means that it has covered 22 minus 11 that is 11 meters similarly in segment 3 23 to 35 this means that uh, the car has covered 12 meters and uh, from in last segment from 36 to 49 this means that the car has covered 
13 meters. If the car takes the same interval of time to cover all the four segments, this means that the time interval between all these four segments are same. Let's say this is 10 seconds, this is 10 seconds, this is 10 seconds, and this is 10 second we have just exemplify all the segments that, that are of 10 seconds so the speed in the first segment will be the distance over time that is 10 over 10 equals to 1 meter per second similarly in the second segment we have the distance 11 divided by time that is 1.1 meter per second and the second third case third segment the distance divided by time that is uh, 1.2 meter per second and finally 1.3 meter per second in the last segment so the correct option describing that uh, the given situation that the car has uniform velocity that is incorrect because as we can see the speed of the car is increasing the speed of car is changing so option c is incorrect option uh, b that saying that the work car is decelerating and the deceleration means decrease in the velocity or the speed so uh, in all the four segments speed is increasing rather than decreasing so this option b is incorrect and the car come to rest after each segment this is incorrect so the correct answer for this question number eight is option a that is the car is accelerating and why it is accelerating because the four uh, the velocity is changing in equal interval of time so the correct answer is option a then we have question number nine a force of 10 newton is acting along the x-axis and we have to identify the y component of this force so the force acting along x-axis means we have this force that is acting 10 newton in the x direction similarly a force acting along y-axis will be such uh, will be this that is uh, let's say this is also 10 newton so if a force is acting along x-axis this means that the y component of the force is equal to zero and the complete force will be equal to fx similarly if the force is acting along y-axis so the x component of the force is zero and uh, this all whole force will be equal to f5 so let's come to our question a force is acting along the x-axis so this is the example uh, which we are talking about and its y component is equal to zero so the correct answer for this question number nine is option a then we have question number 10 if two forces of 3 newton and 4 newton are acting at a point perpendicular to each other so these forces will be something like this this is 3 newton and a force of 4 newton and these two forces are perpendicular to each other so the resultant of this force can be calculated with the help of pythagoras theorem so this side pythagoras theorem will be equals to x square equals to 4 square plus 3 square this will be equal to 16 plus 9 so x square will be equals to 25 so the resultant is equal to square root of 5 that is uh, square root of 25 that is equal to 5 newton so the magnitude of uh, or the resultant of these two forces acting perpendicularly to each other is equal to 5 newton so the correct answer for this question is option a 
Now let's see question number 11. We have a speed time graph in this question and uh, the speed of an object from x to y. We have to identify the time analysis. We have to analysis the type of motion in the region x to y. So as we can see, this is a straight horizontal line and this type of line in the speed time graph shows that the speed of the body is constant speed is uniform or speed is constant and this constant speed or uniform speed can also be descri described as the acceleration is equal to zero so we have to identify about the speed of the object so as we can see there is no increase or decrease in the speed of the car so this means that the body is in the uniform motion and its speed is is constant or uniform so the correct answer for question number 11 is option C we have question number 12 a 36 Newton of force pull a system of three masses on a horizontal frictionless surface as shown in the diagram we have to find the acceleration of this system so we have force we have masses and we have to find the acceleration so the formula that relates these three quantities is f equals to m a so acceleration will be equals to f over m and uh, f total force is 36 while the total mass of this whole system is 8 plus 6 plus 4 so total mass of the system is 18 kilogram and force is 36 newtons so the correct answer would come out to be 2 meters per second square so the correct answer will become the option b now let's see question number 13 a mass m with a velocity v strikes a ball perpendicular and returns with the same velocity so for example we have this ball and we have a ball that has mass m and moving in this direction with the velocity v it strikes the wall and bounces back with the same velocity v what is the change in momentum of that body so let's say if the initial velocity v is positive so the final velocity will be negative because the ball is moving in the opposite direction so initial momentum will be equals to mass time velocity and the final momentum will be equal to mass times velocity just the difference between their momentum is the direction of velocity and the direction of momentum the before colliding the wall the initial momentum is positive and in right direction with the velo as the direction of velocity similarly the final momentum of the ball is in negative and because the velocity is negative and why the velocity is negative because the, uh, the ball has the same velocity except the direction so the negative sign represents the direction of velocity so change in momentum will be equals to final momentum minus initial momentum final momentum is m multiplied by minus v and the initial momentum is m multiplied by minus v so the change in momentum will be equals to minus 2 m v so the correct answer for the change in momentum of the body is option c minus 2 m v then we have question number 14 an astronaut is sitting in a rocket on earth which is ready to launch to the moon when the astronaut will reach the moon what will happen to its weight and mass 
We know that the mass is a universal constant. Its value do not change until and unless the body changes or body breaks. So, uh, mass will remain same while reaching the moon. Uh, as far as weight is concerned, weight is equal to mass times gravitational acceleration. So, we know that the gravitational acceleration on the surface of Earth is 10, while on the surface of Moon, it is equal to 1.6 centimeters per second square, that is less than as that of surface of the Earth. So, this clearly uh, st states that Ma weight of that astronaut will decrease on the surface of moon while for the mass it will remain same so weight will decrease and the mass remain same so here we have a correct answer that is in option c then we have question 15 if two ends of the string are stretched by uh, two opposite forces of 10 newtons we have to find the tension in the string so let's say this is a string and this string is pulled with the force of 10 newton and uh, the force of 10 newton in the opposite direction so the stretchness in that string will be due to the application of these forces and uh, this stretchness will be known as tension force so this tension is actually due to the application of these two forces so the tension the net force obviously acting on that string is zero because these two forces are opposite to each other and will cancel out each other effect but the tension in the string will still be equal to 10 newton because net force is zero but stretchness is still there so the tension in the for in the string will be equal to 10 newton so option c is the right answer Let's see question number 16. How much centripetal force is needed for to move a body of mass 10 kilogram? So we have mass, we have a radius and we have a speed 3 meter per second and we have to find the value of centripetal force. So this question is simple Fc equals mb square over r. So, mass is 10, velocity is 3 square and uh, the radius is 20 meters. So, the 0 and the 0 will be cancelled out. 3 square is 9 divided by 2. So, centripetal force will become 4.5 newtons. So, we have got a right answer that is option B, 4.5. Now let's see the question number 17. The measure of the inertia of the body depends on which of the following quantity. So we know that inertia is a measure of the body that resists to change in the state. So the mass is a quantity that resists the change in the state of the body. Greater the mass, greater is the inertia of the body so inertia is a property that is directly proportional to mass option a is the right answer for this question number 17 let's see now question number 18 if the body of mass 10 kilogram is placed on the surface of earth then the pull of earth on the body will be so the pull of earth on every body is known as the weight of that body so gravitational acceleration is 9.8 that is g and we have to find the weight so weight equals to mg so mass is 10 and gravity is 9.8 so 10 into 9.8 will become 98 newtons so correct answer for this question number 18 is option c 
then we have question number 19 it is difficult to drive a car on oily road because a friction a force or the frictional force on the oily road is very less to drive a car we need a friction between the tires and uh, the road so oily road or oily surface becomes smooth and the smoothness actually decreases the frictional force option b is the right answer in question 19. then we have question number 20 of sports car is make stable by increasing the base area or it can be done by decreasing the height of uh, center of gravity so option d is the right answer that, that uh, stability has two factors uh, the base area and the position of center of gravity larger base area and a lower center of gravity increases the stability of the body let's see the 21 the perpendicular distance between the axis of rotation and the line of action of force so this distance that is, is known as the moment arm so option c is the right answer let's see question number 22 if after disturbance the body again comes to rest and its center of gravity does not change so in this type of equilibrium what will be the state of the equilibrium so in a stable equilibrium we know that body comes to its original position this means that the center the position of center of gravity will become same when it comes to its original position as compared to the previous one in unstable equilibrium the body changes its position and will not come to its original position this means that in new position the position of center of gravity will be different as compared to the old position while in the neutral equilibrium body she comes to a new position similar to the first position and the position of center of gravity remains at the same height or remains same so the given condition that is in question satisfied by the stable equilibrium as well as the neutral equilibrium so one in three both are correct option c is the right answer Compared to the sea level, atmospheric pressure on the mountain is lowered because as we go up above the surface of earth, the, uh, the uh, atmospheric pressure decreases because the amount of gases, the amount of concentration of gases decreases while moving upward and at a point where the concentration becomes zero, the atmospheric gases vanishes, the atmospheric pressure becomes zero. So the correct answer for 23 is option C that is sent uh, that uh, the atmospheric pressure will be lowered above the surface of the earth in question number 24 to push the liquid up in a straw the air pressure inside the straw will uh, what happens to the uh, air pressure inside the straw so what happens when we use a juice box with the help of straw let's say this is the straw dipped in a packet of juice in which this is air and it is pushing downward on the surface of liquid similarly here we have also air and this air is pushing downward so these two atmospheric pressures are equal so uh, the level of the liquid remains same when we suck from this end we actually pull out the air when we pull out the air the atmospheric pressure decreases inside the straw 
and due to pressure inside the box the liquid tends to move upward or come out of the box so in short the pressure inside the straw will decrease so that the internal pressure would become greater and the juice or the liquid will come out of the straw let's see question 25 according to the kinetic molecular model of the matter molecule of the substance are in the state of rest that is incorrect they are a state of motion they have the constant momentum they have the same velocity during collision so option b is the right answer the molecules are moving with different velocities they have a different momentum and uh, when they collide the velocity changes so the option d is also incorrect so right answer is option b then we have question number 26 the property of the solids that uh, restore them to their original shape size or volume when the restoring force acting on them is ceases or stops so the property due to which the object can regain its shape size or volume it is a property known as the elasticity option b is the right answer let's see question number 27 the parcel box weight 500 newton is placed on the table if the area of the bottom of the box is 0.5 meter square we have to find the pressure exerted by the box on the table so we know that the pressure equals force over area so this is the force in newton this is area in square meter so 500 over 0.5 will be equals to 1000 newtons per meter square or pascals so option d is the right answer in a magic shoe a performer lies down on a bed of nail without any injury however when he performs the same uh, same performance steps on a single nail it goes right through his foot so this is a simple observation a performer can lie down on his back on the uh, bed of nails uh, without any injury but if he put his toe or foot on this uh, same bed of nail it can hurt uh, that person so why is that difference with reference to the given statement which statement is true about this given situation air is same in both case so this is straight forward incorrect because when is lying down area is greater and when he is standing the area is less force remains the same but more pressure on the bed of nail force remains same but more pressure on the bed of nails so first statement is correct but more pressure is incorrect because uh, when he is lying on the bed so the area is greater and the pressure will be less so this is incorrect a uh, force increase but less pressure on the bed of nail so force will not increase this is incorrect answer more force is exerted on a single nail than on the entire bed of the nail so when the when he put the foot on a single nail all his weight force will act on a single point of the nail of the uh, tip of the nail so in that case this uh, will increase the pressure due to less area and this increased pressure will hurt that person so option d is the right answer in a clinical thermometer mercury does not fall back into the bulb because it is less in quantity it is in capillary tube of the shape of the thermometer and of the constriction in the capillary tube so the correct answer is option d because the clinical thermometer mercury 
uh, as uh, uh, mercury shows a level of the uh, rooms it must uh, rooms temperature so it does not fall into the uh, bulb not because it is in less quantity and not because it is in a capillary tube or it is not due to the shape of the thermometer right answer is option d all of the following are the factors that can affect the rate of evaporation except the one so surface area is the uh, will uh, uh, will change or affect the rate of evaporation surface temperature will increase the rate of evaporation and option d that is the pressure at the surface while in uh, the greater the surface pressure will decrease the rate of evaporation so this is these are the direct factors on which rate of evaporation depends option c is the right answer that will not directly affect the rate of evaporation the scape of high kinetic energy molecules from in the form of vapors from the only surface of the liquid so this process without heating as well so this process is known as evaporation option c we have is the right answer for this question let's see 32 in an inflated tire of a car burst the temperature of air that will escape from the tire will so in a tire before it is burst the volume is less and in less volume the pressure is more and the temperature is also uh, more p and t are also more so when the car uh, tires burst the volume of uh, the gas or volume of the air inside it increases so this increase in volume decreases the temperature of the uh, air inside the tire so the correct answer for this question number 32 is option b let's see question number 33 if the temperature of the substance is 20 degrees centigrade and this temperature in the Kelvin scale will be. So we know that Kelvin scale equals to C plus 273 degrees. Uh, in degree centigrade it is 20 and plus 273 will become to uh, 93 Kelvin. So the correct answer is option D. When a glass tube which is heated at a high temperature is immediately immersed in a beaker of cold water, it is cracked as compared to the cold water. We have to identify the reason behind this phenomena that why the glass tube burst or uh, is cracked when it is put in the cold water. So the correct answer for this question number 34 is option B that a glass has low specific heat capacity as compared to water. Water has a very large specific heat capacity and a glass has low heat capacity. Due to this uh, uh, due to this, there is very little change in the temperature of water as compared to the glass that uh, rapidly changes the, its uh, temperature. So, uh, this uh, uh, breaks the surface of the glass. Option B is the right answer. The good conductor among uh, those four uh, we have to identify the good conductor so glass door and a wooden door and a leather jacket these are the insulators and option b frying pan that is used for the cooking purpose it is the good conductor option b is the 
right answer. Radiations incident on the surface increases its temperature. So radiation is directly proportional to temperature of the surface. Which of the following characteristics should be present in the surface that should protect itself most effectively against the radiation? So the substance that uh, should be poor absorber and good emitter so poor absorber means it will not uh, absorb the radiation and a good emitter means that it will radiate more fast so the option b is the right answer let's see question number 37 and 8 which of the following statement is false about the heat transfer Conduction is poor in gases. This is absolutely right because conduction occurs in solid. As a substance absorbs heat, its temperature always increases. This is also correct. A cold substance attains the temperature of its surrounding when it is placed in the hotter condition. This is also correct. The hotter the substance, less will be the radiation. This statement is false because hotter the body, it will radiate more. Option B is the right answer. All of the following are the methods to prevent heat loss from house in winter except for the one. So double glazed window will uh, insulate the heat inside the house that can be used to increase the temperature in winter. Double ceiling and carpeted floor, these also uses the insulators and insulator will uh, stop or reduce the thermal radiation from room from into the surrounding so tile floor is the right answer so this tile floor because tile has a low specific heat capacity and a high thermal conductivity due to this in winters the tile will become cooled and in summers the tile becomes hot Let's come to the last two questions of this year 2021 of the theory exam. Uh, the process of heat transfer in liquid and gases. As we know that the process of heat transfer in solid is known as conduction, while the gases and uh, liquids are the poor conductor of heat. So the process that involves the transfer of heat through these two states of matter is known as convection. So option B, two only, is the right answer. When a wooden spoon is dipped in a bowl of soup, it does not become hot. So the reason is same that wood is the uh, good insulator, good thermal insulator and wouldn't allow heat to transfer through it. In the given situation, wooden uh, spoon act as the heat insulator or thermal insulator. So correct answer is option D for this question number 40. So here we are with the last 10 questions of the alternative practical ATP part of this exam paper 2021. So let's see the 41st question or the first question in our ATP exam. You are given the glass test tube and we have to determine the volume. So which of the following instrument could be our best choice to find the volume of that test tube? So, to find the volume, we will need to measure the external diameter of the tube and as well as the internal diameter of the tube. So, internal and external, both the diameters can be measured with the help of the instrument known as vernier caliper. So, the correct answer is option D. Let's see question number 42. We are given with a, uh, with a metallic square and uh, a one-year caliper and uh, we have to find the 
mean scale reading so to find the mean scale reading we have to check that uh, this zero where this zero lie on the mean scale so this is 30 and this is 40 in uh, this means that each division is equal to one millimeters one millimeter so this zero is ahead of 31 and behind this 32 this means the correct answer for this question 42 will be 31 the main scale reading of this question is 31 millimeters then we have question number 43 in an amusement park child takes a slide he starts from rest this means that his initial velocity is 0 and the velocity becomes 5 this is final velocity and it takes 5 seconds we have to find the acceleration of the child that is will be equal to vf minus vi over t so final velocity is 5 initial velocity is 0 divided by 5 so we will get 1 meter per second square option a is the right answer let's see our next question uh, the given spring mass system has five slotted and each slot is weight 50 gram and due to these five uh, due to these five weights the extension is uh, extension on this uh, scale is at this position that is 15 centimeters so five weights equals 15 centimeters so this means that one weight is equal to uh, around three centimeter of extension this is 15 over five centimeters divided by uh, gram weight so one weight changes the extension through three centimeters increasing a weight will increase three centimeter and decreasing the weight will decrease the three centimeter of the extension so if one slotted weight is removed so this means that the extension would decrease by three centimeters so right now the extension is 15 if we remove one slot from this spring the reading would become 12 centimeters so correct answer is option c then we have question number 45 the following figure shows the vector addition of two forces F1 and F2. These two forces are equal to 50 newtons and we have to find the weight of that object. So we know that this force F2 can be uh, and F1 can be split into rectangular component. This will be equal to F2x and this will be F2y. Similarly, this will be F1 x and this will be equal to f to f1 y so weight will be equal to the vertical forces f1 y plus f2 y f1 y will be equals to f1 sine theta and f2 y will be equal to f2 sine theta f1 is equal to 50 and theta is 30 so so 50 multiplied by sine 30 and 50 multiplied by sine 30 so we will put the value of sine 30 and let's calculate this uh, expression so this is 25 newtons plus 25 newtons because sine 30 is equal to 0. 5. this is the fixed value so we have substituted this value and after solving we will get 50 newton so correct answer is option b let's come to our question number 46 
The given figure shows two equal boxes, one and two hanged on a meter rod fixed on the fulcrum. A student has been given the task by the teacher to balance the rod. So what should he do, he or she can do to balance this weights uh, uh, on the given scale. So as we can see that the torque due to this uh, uh, block is greater than a torque due to this uh, weight. So to balance this uh, is obvious that we can shift this uh, weight one to the right side of the rod to balance this uh, uh, scale. So among these four options, option D is the right answer that we should move box one away from the center point or from the fulcrum. So option D is the right answer. In this given diagram, this uh, meter rod is balanced at its center uh, by fulcrum and the distances d1, d2 and d3 are equal to 40, 10 and 15. So d1 is 40, d2 is 10 and d3 uh, is 15. And as we can see, these three distances are from center of uh, rotation or fulcrum. This means these three are the moment arm. If F1, F2 are 5 and 10, this is 5, this is 10, we have to find the F3. So as we can see, these two forces rotate the rod in the counterclockwise direction and this is in the clockwise direction and this rod is balanced this means that the clockwise and anti-clockwise torque would be equal so f1 d1 plus f2 d2 will be equal to f3 d3 f1 d2 are 5 multiplied by 40 F2 D2 is 10 multiplied by 10 and F3 D3 will be equal to F3 multiplied by 15. So if we calculate uh, this uh, expression 5 into 40 will be equal to 200 plus 100 equals to 15 F3. So 300 divided by 15 will be equal to F3. So the correct answer for this question number 47 would be equal to 20 Newtons. So the option B in question number 47 is the right answer of this question. Let's see question number 48. In the science lab, a student heats up chemicals from uh, or substance from 10 degree to 20 degrees. So we have the change in temperature that is 10 degree centigrade or 10 Kelvin. Then we have the thermal energy of uh, 1000 joules that is the Q. If the mass of the substance is 10 kilogram and the specific heat capacity we have to find out. So we know that the change in heat or uh, change in energy delta Q is equals to Cm delta T. So let's substitute these values. Q is 1000 divided by M is 10 and delta T is also 10. So C will be equals to these two zeros will be cancel out. So the correct answer for 48, question number 48 will be equals to 10 joules per kg degree centigrade. So option C is the right answer. Let's see the next question. The given graph shows the change of ice into water on heating. Which of the following statement is true about the given graph? So let's identify the true statement. At point two, water starts boiling. So from point two to point three, as we can see that uh, the temperature is increasing, so starts boiling is incorrect because boiling involves uh, boiling occurs at constant temperature. From region two to three represents condensation, so condensation is the reverse process and temperature decreases. So from 2 to 3, it shows the increase in temperature. So option B is also 
incorrect. At point 3, the water gets converted into steam. So, at point 3, the, uh, the boiling process has just started, but uh, so option C is also incorrect. So, last option that is option D is the right answer in region 1 and region 2. The ice and water are in thermal equilibrium because the temperature is constant. So, option D is the right answer. Then we have the last question of this year 2021. The pointer of the spring balance in figure 2 moves up when a metallic bob suspended from it is immersed into the liquid that is denser as compared to air. Refer figure 1 for the comparison. So its, its weight in air was around 250 while its weight in uh, water is around 150. So the same object but its weight is different in different uh, medium. One is in air and the other is in water. So this difference in reading is because of uh, which of the following reason. So according to the Archimedes principle there is an apparent loss in the weight of the pole and uh, this is due to the uptrust that is applied by that liquid on the ball. So option C is the right answer of this last question in this year 2021.